Welcome to Arkansas Issues, Local Government, brought to you by Conduit News. I'm your host, Patrick Deakins. A hot topic of debate right now are county ordinances being considered by several counties around the state. These are Bill of Rights sanctuary ordinances meant to protect our Bills of Rights, specifically our Second Amendment rights, from unconstitutional laws that may come from different levels of government. Proponents say these are needed to help protect those rights, but opponents question their validity or even their need. Today, my guest is Carrie Perrin-Smith. She serves as a Justice of the Peace for Benton County, District Number 5. Benton County has recently taken up this ordinance and is considering it, so we brought Carrie in to give us a bird's eye view of, of how this debate is going. Carrie, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and what makes you passionate to be a JP. Well, I am a first term JP, so this is my first time to serve an elected office. I am learning a great deal. There is a learning curve that I don't know that I was prepared for. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can attest to that as, an, as a first termer. You know, most of what JPs do is uh, help create and appropriate a budget and then, you know, approve the expenditures that you already talked about in the budget preparation process. Sure. That's really basically what a JP does. So it's really exciting that we have an opportunity to dig into something that would, you know, prepare what is considered the farm team for the state legislature, you know, that prepare them to go to the next level. So I love that we're, we're getting a, an opportunity as a body to be able to have this conversation. Right. So, and consider something with some com constitutional implications. Yeah, and we're actually going to learn a great deal through this process. So I don't know that everybody is is really super focused. And, you know, we, we kind of think of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights as a living document, and that's the way everything is supposed to go. We don't really I don't expect to have to defend it. And things are changing in our country. And um, political opposition wants change sometimes. Absolutely. And so there's big money behind it uh, that does motivate it and kind of creates some, right. some opportunity for change that maybe flies in the face of what we believe should be you know, originist, <laughs> right. original thought by our country. Sure. Well, give us, give us an overview of what you see this ordinance providing the citizens. Well, I believe that this is probably a framework that lays over our constitutional rights. And we won't need it unless something goes completely haywire in the country. Okay. So I believe that it's really I mean, a protection mechanism for our constitutional rights. You know, part of the Republican platform and as a conservative, the belief is that the, the government closest to the people is usually the most effective and the most efficient. So there is, you believe... Uh, a, a possibility that this county level governments could weigh in on this subject. Well, I think they should. And, and definitely whether you decide to go with a resolution or an ordinance or decide to do nothing at all, you're weighing in. So we just happen to be one of those counties that believes in the second amendment and believes in the rights of our citizens to bear arms. And, and, you know, and we are a, a 15 member Republican quorum court. So it is mandated upon us by our voters who vote for us to look at this and really take it seriously. Absolutely. Yep. So this ordinance is specifically meant to protect from infringements on the Second Amendment. And as originalist, I think the Constitution was very clear about the right to bear arms. Right. But we see that there are people that interpret that differently, and there are threats to your Bill of Rights, including your Second Amendment. Exactly. Right. We don't really know. There's there's rumblings coming at the federal level that something could change. Um, you know, and especially there's a lot of conversation with red flag laws and what's really going to happen with this. And when you start talking about what goes into a red flag law, I think uh, there's a lot of people who worry, will I fall under that? You know, will I have to give up my guns? Will I be able to buy guns from now on because I ended up falling into this either because I have PTSD or some other thing? When you're an otherwise rational, normal gun owner Absolutely. that's not going to go out and create mayhem. 
And and it's not only your Second Amendment, but red flags really have a problem now too with with due process and all those types of things that are also protected under the Constitution. So right. this is this is a wide ranging conversation. Yeah, and it, it is much deeper, especially when you look at the ordinance that the the Libertarian Party, which is really running this um, through the different counties, um, their I believe their goal is to get all of the uh, county quorum courts around the state to adopt this. Um, so it does protect our right to bear arms. And so I believe that their intent was really just to protect our opportunity. Yeah, and when, when I look it. at it, gun owners, I think we can understand how they feel like their rights are being infringed mm-hmm. or that there's the possibility there. Yeah. I mean, like you touched on, we hear a lot of rhetoric at the federal level, the state level about red flag laws, you know, there's been different legislation proposed right. uh, and passed in other areas that would infringe on that Second Amendment. So there, you think there is a conversation to be had here. And I, it is well, legitimate. I definitely do. And when you look at what happened with bump stocks alone, you know, they've already dealt with that. That is mentioned in this ordinance, but they've already dealt with that at the federal level. Sure. So I think when we start seeing things like that, it should raise our radar that there could be other things that are infringements upon what we think are classic Second Amendment rights. Right. One of the things that is added to this debate is the legal counsel for the AAC, the Arkansas Association of Counties, has come out and really questioned the need for this. Mm -hmm. And if it violates other constitutions, specifically the Arkansas state constitution. Uh, but my, my deal is if a county wanted to weigh in, what does it hurt? You know, so right. can you speak to that a little bit or what your feelings are there? Well, the Mike Rainwater, who represents the AAC or the Association of Arkansas Counties, uh, has been very helpful. He's prepared some documents, done some research. Uh, he has suggested that we do a resolution. He wrote us a resolution. Um, George Spence, our county attorney, uh, took the resolution and made it more plain English version, which I really appreciate about George. You know, when we look at the difference between, you know, if we just want to make a statement, let's do a resolution. But I don't think that we're, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just not sensing from our, our body of, of quorum court members that we think resolution does anything right it's a statement and i mean what are they going to do with with it at the next level up if we pass a resolution pat us on the head right i mean i just feel like this is the constitution we're talking about you know either we pass an ordinance or we don't but we invest real time into considering this carefully so you're getting the feeling that benton county wants to take some sort of step albeit cautioned and well-informed steps they don't want just a a publicity stunt, if you will, with just a resolution. That would be too simple. Well, and I, I don't think, I, I think definitely, mm-hmm. you know, the Association of Arkansas Counties would like to keep us out of litigation. I mean, that's the purpose of having legal counsel sure. is to keep us, you know, out of litigation that's going to ultimately cost the taxpayers money. So we definitely don't want to do anything that would cost the taxpayers money. Uh, but there's real money invested in opposing these traditional values that we hold true in America. Right. And they want to change America. And so sometimes, you know, we have to look at, you know, do we do this? You know, yes, Mike Rainwater wants us to, to take the path of least resistance. Right. And I value that because it does ultimately save taxpayers money, but it also at what cost. So we want to weigh this carefully. <clears throat> We don't necessarily want to spend a lot of time doing something that isn't necessary. But during our public forum that we had last week at our Committee of the Whole, I mean, we had 90 minutes of public forum. And it is on our website. And now with the other documents that we've been looking at and receiving, um, so that people can listen to the whole audio of the program that wants you. And so I'd like you to post that link as well sure. in the comments or within the description for this one. But we had people present from both sides. Uh, Moms Demand Action has been very active in, you know, trying to get us not to do this. You know, they throw out the term, there's a hundred acts of gun violence every single day. And I don't, I need to know more about what that what can what are they constituting as as gun violence? Because that can be a police officer and a bad guy. 
You know? right. I mean, that's not necessarily domestic violence always. And so anyway, so we, we hear that and we got some form letters and we had maybe a couple of phone calls. I had very few. I have a very voter active district and it, I, I got very few calls. Um, I talked to another one, maybe in Bella Vista. He said he had a dozen. I don't know whether they were two or, or you know, four or against. Um, so you would like to hear more feedback from citizens, we pro or con, feedback. and more information. Well, and I, I think here's the thing for me, and maybe it's because I'm a female legislator. I need to personalize this. If I'm going to be attacked for a stand I take on anything, I want to have all the facts. And what I'm hearing is the Democrats have come to, you know, urge us not to do this. The libertarians say we absolutely need to do this. And there's no Republicans out there giving us any feedback. Right. I need to hear need from to hear the from people them. that elected us. Sure. And so that's really, you know, why I think we should have this conversation. And, you know, Conduit's audience is very Second Amendment friendly. Mm hmm and I enjoy reading the comments. And so what I'm hoping is that we will have a lot of comments from people who can help us find different ways to personalize this. Because I know each time that I'm presented with that, not every argument appeals to me. Not every argument feels personal to me. But when I have a chance for that argument to uh, be able to be internalized and meshed with what I already believe or my personal values, it really helps me defend that. And it helps me create a conversation with people that are sitting across from me having coffee. Great. You know, at my yes. Bible study group or whatever. So, and that's what we need sometimes. We need talking points and we need to give people a chance to talk about this so that we can pay attention and read what sure. they have to say. Sure. Specifically with the ordinance and the wording, what the ordinance is instructing is that the county will not use its assets, whether that be law enforcement, funds, anything like that, to enforce an unconstitutional law. Is that correct? Um, I believe that is correct. And I think uh, way back when we were a dry county, there was a law that you couldn't bring liquor over the state line or over the county line. And things like that did not get re get enforced. <laughs> and so it always makes me wonder when we put something in there like that, will we enforce that? Right. Or would we enforce it if that was happening at the national level? So sure. I think you have to ask yourself, you know, what if these, these items in here, would we enforce and could we enforce? Right. So... Where does Benton County take this from here? What's the next step? And how can citizens let their voices be heard? Well, definitely the more voices that we have coming to the table that are not a form letter, please. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're going to be active, don't send me a form letter. Gotcha. <laughs> so I need to know how you've internalized this issue. Um, Benton County uh, took our Committee of the Whole conversation, devoted that to public forum. We had some conversation about going a next step and doing a subcommittee. We have not got that solidified. I believe at Thursday's Quorum Court meeting next week, we will have that framework maybe kind of solidified, put into place. I don't know who all will be on that committee. I think there is an interest in many, many of the Quorum, mem quorum Court members in being on that that committee to have that conversation. It, each one of us are very different. And I think there's many of us leaning in and want to know more and learn more, but we've really never had to defend this. Right. I have never had to defend this. And I want to be able to do it and do it for the right reason and do it in a way that I feel that it's personal to me and my family and my values. And I don't think I'm alone. Right. So um, hopefully next week we will have the framework solidified for that subcommittee. Great. Carrie, I really appreciate you taking the time to explain this, give us an overview, and I appreciate your service as a JP. I thank you for stating that. Thank up. you. Ladies and gentlemen, the debate rages on protecting your rights and at what level those protections should come from, and it's happening right in your backyard. I'm your host, Patrick Deakins, with Arkansas Issues, brought to you by Conduit News. Till next time. 